Welcome to MS Learn Online. I'm Kate Milliken. In our first program on invisible symptoms, we learned what these symptoms are and what we can do to manage them. We'll continue our discussion of invisible symptoms with Dr. Rosalind Call, Vice President of the National MS Society's Professional Resource Center. Last time, we talked about how frustrating it can be when the people around us don't see many of the challenges that those of us with MS are living with every day. In this program, Dr. Cobb will help us with some coping mechanisms that we can use in dealing with these invisible symptoms. Dr. Cobb, you know, when I was diagnosed in 2006, I remember there was such a paradox in my mind of getting such a serious diagnosis from symptoms like fatigue and uh, numbness and tingling. And I'm just curious from your experience on, on whether you have a similar feeling with other patients. I think that that's a very real experience for a lot of people. Um, it, it, it's scary to get a diagnosis of MS, but you can look at yourself in the mirror and you look the same as you did the day before you got this diagnosis, but you know that your body feels different or your mind isn't functioning the way it was. And it takes people time to, to figure out what that's going to mean in their lives and how to get used to the idea that they're living with these symptoms that just aren't apparent to those around them. I remember talking to people and saying, you know, how are you feeling? And me saying, I'm, I'm not feeling well. And I would try to kind of say things in kind of simple uh, descriptions, you know. Um, well, you know, I went to bed at 8 and I woke up at 10 and I felt like I didn't get any sleep. Or I'm taking a step and there explode, I feel like there are explosions of nerves, you know, coming up my leg. Um, have you found that people try to articulate what's happening with them through kind of metaphors like that? Um, to get, get the impression. I think that some people do that and do it very well. Some people actually need to be helped or taught how to do that because the, the, the symptoms are so intense for them that it it's becomes hard to imagine that other people can't see it, can't understand it. So they have to be encouraged to use descriptions like that, metaphors like that. Uh, somebody who's very fatigued, for example, will say, I don't know how to describe it except to say it's like putting 500 pound weights on my legs and slogging through mud. Um, that helps other people understand the intensity because if you just say you're tired, all of us feel fatigue from time to time or we get sleepy if we've had a bad night or whatever. So to just say I'm tired is never going to convey the extent of that MS fatigue. So people have to come up with examples to use, metaphors to use. So I think that's very helpful. Are there ever times where it's a good thing? You know, it might be something that uh, you don't want to tell someone your symptoms. Absolutely. Um, if you're in a work situation, for example, and you're able to do your job relatively comfortably and you're not in a position where you need to ask your employer for um, an accommodation in order to do your job, um, the, the National Mass Society generally advises people not to disclose. So if the symptoms that you're dealing with are invisible and nobody's asking questions and there's no obvious impairment, they might choose not to discuss those symptoms at all, not to share the diagnosis until there's a need to. So for those people, if they can manage those invisible symptoms comfortably, they put off whatever decision they have to make about disclosing to their employer. If those invisible symptoms, however, become so debilitating, for example, severe fatigue, or a vision problem, or significant difficulties with bladder or, or bowel, um, then that person may need to disclose those invisible symptoms, educate their colleagues and employer about it so they can request the accommodations that they need to be effective. In some ways, the whole concept of invisible symptoms kind of exemplifies what MS is compared to other things that people may have. Can you, um, do, can you relate to that? Sure, I think that's why we talk about the iceberg image all the time with people with MS, that if you look at the iceberg, you see the tip of it above the water. It's very clear. Those would be the visible symptoms of walking impairment or balance impairment that somebody might have. But below the surface, all the symptoms that you can't see, like that bottom of the iceberg, which is actually much bigger than what shows above the surface of the water. So. I think for many people living with MS, the 
uh, invisible symptoms make up the bulk of their experience of the disease from day to day. Very, very challenging. From your perspective, what are some coping mechanisms that people could have um, for certain symptoms that they may experience? Well, clearly the coping mechanisms are going to differ depending on what the symptoms are and how they interfere. But I think the very first coping mechanism is to be educated about MS and the kinds of invisible symptoms it can cause because the first thing one has to do is make sure that um, you're describing all of those symptoms to your healthcare team so that they can begin to help you manage them. I think the second thing is to know your body. So for example, if heat causes your vision to worsen or causes your fati uh, fatigue to uh, grow um, or, or your, your balance isn't as good, then that's a signal that your body is stressed or overheated and so you learn to read those signals from your body so that you can start to do those self-care things. I think it's also uh, incredibly important to figure out who are the people in your life who do need to understand your loved ones, the people closest to you. Um, they have to know what's going on or they don't know how to relate, okay? And, and so um, figuring out whom to tell about those symptoms, how to describe them in a way that they can understand, or what kinds of educational materials you might, might want to share with them about those. Because I think one of the things that's tricky about these invisible symptoms is that because people can't see them, they are so easy to misinterpret. So uh, unless a person is educated and realizes what a common symptom fatigue is in MS, uh, a spouse or a child of a person who has a lot of fatigue might just misinterpret that as you're not interested or you're too busy to do something with me or you'd prefer to do something else than do something with me. So when we educate people about the fatigue, it's not just me and my fatigue. This is a common symptom in MS. It makes it easier um, for family members to get their heads around it. Yeah. One of the things that I totally appreciate um, working with a physician myself is, you know, they do take those symptoms seriously. Um, and I think that that type of, um, you know, space where they can understand. I mean, you could tell them anything and, uh, and they would really listen and try to evaluate it in terms of managed care. And, uh, and I think that that's been very helpful. Well, and, and, and that brings up another point, and that is one of the reasons that support groups can be so helpful is that somebody who's been dealing with invisible symptoms and nobody seems to get it, they go to a support group with other people who have MS and are dealing with similar invisible symptoms and suddenly they're surrounded by people who get it. Yeah. That's right. And it's a feeling of total kind of acceptance. Uh, I feel normal here. I don't have to be explaining myself all the time because when I talk about a symptom I have, I can look around the room and people are nodding, smiling, and. I feel a lot of support from that. So that's one of the reasons that we really encourage people to find others that they can share their experiences with and connect because it's such a feeling of validation when the rest of the world just looks puzzled. Yeah, and I think not, even if um, somebody doesn't have the exact same symptom, just hearing about somebody else's MS experience, like, wow, that, that's a really weird symptom you're having. Like, I'm not having that, but it gives you such a nice sense of perspective, which I think is really helpful. Um, invisible symptoms, very, very challenging, but we can do something about them. So uh, getting people to, uh, again, share that information with their health care provider and get that help will make dealing with the rest of it easier. Yeah, and understands really the nature of the disease. That's right. Dr. Koff, thank you so much. And it's really nice from somebody with MS to feel such a sense of, of empathy um, for someone that doesn't have it. So thank you. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about MS symptoms or get more information on living with MS, go to www.nationalmssociety.org. This is Kate Milliken for MS Learn Online. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.